investigation. And Mark McVeigh, uh, you made the news today. I mean, a couple of months ago, Spike, you were very bullish about what was happening. Now you seem to be fearful. What's changed? Uh, not a lot's changed in terms of I still uh, strongly think that uh, I didn't receive anything uh, illegal or none of the players did. Um, it was just that uh, the line of questioning that I was asked of was quite surprising and shocking and I spoke about a little bit earlier about certain individuals that aren't a part of the Essendon Football Club, uh, people's names that I had never heard of before or met and uh, I was asked uh, did I know them, had I had any association with them and uh, that sort of really shocked me and surprised me. Um, and certainly uh, just the whole, uh, the intensity of the, the uh, investigation was quite serious and I said I really felt for the young players that are playing at the football club and, and really respect what they're doing at the moment. To be able to galvanise that group and play under the pressure that they would be under, uh, it's, it's quite remarkable. So just to set that up, Steve, that was during the week you went back in front of a saddle on Tuesday, Wednesday for yeah. four hours. Yeah, it wasn't quite that long, but it was, it was, it was, quite, it was a long meeting and uh, a lot of questions, and a lot of questions I couldn't answer because I simply didn't know, and uh, they have to do it. And uh, I, the, the great thing was, too, they were very upfront about uh, you know, making sure that uh, we felt comfortable. Um, all you could do was tell the truth, and I felt comfortable in that. It was... It was uh, got quite serious at times but uh, that's what I expected and uh, certainly got my point of view across and uh, reflected my thoughts and my memory of what I think happened and uh, I come out of it probably with a few more questions no doubt but I uh, never once got told that um, I received anything illegal, um, I never got told that. Just interested in the blood samples though, you, you inferred yep. there that blood was taken yep. and then taken somewhere else for, yep. for testing and the club was unaware of that, that seems yep. a concern that that would be happening. Yeah, that, that was the one that really shocked me and, and they asked me, obviously, uh, where, where that blood had gone and I just assumed a Melbourne pathology and um, they couldn't really give me an answer of where that gone and that had concerns for me and I was worried in that regard because you assume when you get a test like that that it just goes to your club doctor but um, the way it was spoken about was that things may have been done without uh, doctors, you know, the official doctors of the footy club and also coaches. So is there any inference there that it was maybe taken away to be tested? to make sure the blood was under the, the legal level? Who knows? I don't know. I, I, as I said, I don't think that I took anything illegal. I signed up for this, these... Um, any sort of supplement I signed up for was WADA approved and I, I was given the document that I had signed and it certainly said that. So that uh, certainly gave me a lot of confidence because all you're doing is trying to work off memory and uh, when I got given that, it gave me a lot of confidence that I'd read it through and uh, what I was given was WADA compliant. And I certainly uh, viewed that and I was happy about that. But uh, there was a lot of things that I just couldn't answer because uh, a lot of people outside the club may have had an influence with people that are no longer at the club. And uh, apart from Ian Robson, of course. Um, but uh, that had grave concerns for me. Do you fear now for the footy club that what could happen once the ASADA investigation comes down, for now what you know, maybe the players get off but the club gets hit hard? Uh, I feel the governance side I worry about because um, there was a lot of uh, things that they brought up that I couldn't answer that surprised me um, in terms of one was where, where the blood went when you gave the blood test. Um, you'd hope that the club knew that. Uh, the inference was that they didn't. Um, so I worry from that side of it. I'm not fearful of the players being banned or uh, uh, out of the game because um, there's no way that players would have agreed or signed up to something that was illegal, I can assure you of that. And you, your own health going forward, do you have concerns as a guy heading into middle age uh, that it could be down the track something might happen with what was taken? Uh, no, well, I didn't get that indication. Um, there was concerns when I first went in, um, in my own mind and my family's mind, that... Um, were we given something that uh, I didn't know about and um, that wasn't suggested but um, I did have some questions around that and uh, what we've got to understand too is if you are given uh, a certain supplement there are three or four different strands or uh, tablets if you like of the same su substance that could be illegal the ones I signed up for and the players did we were told they were legal and we certainly uh, what I signed for shows that but uh, the way it was um, portrayed to me was there are three or four different ones that you can have that could be illegal. You can understand why it's taking a while anyway. Uh, everything that you signed said that you were taking legal supplements. Yep. Asada and WADA. WADA compliant. Yep. Everything continues on at the football club Dyson. We don't know when this thing ends but Steve-O it's an ugly mess. St Kilda as we move on and digress uh, are worried about the